Hello clarinet players. So today we're going to work through our book actually a little bit more, play a few pieces and make sure that we can add one more note onto our range. So you should have your Tradition of Excellence Red Book. Um, that is going to be your Bible for the rest of the time doing this. First page in it is your fingering chart. Let's talk a little bit about your fingering chart. Make sure that you can read this by yourself. So when you forget a note, you can go back and find it. So. The notes we already know. Let's find our first one. Our first note that we learned was C, right? That's right here. It looks exactly like the fingering chart I gave you last time, except for it is printed and not hand drawn. So that little black button there just means your thumb is covering the hole, your left hand is covering one, two, three, and your right hand is covering nothing, right? Your second note is D. Thumb one, two, nothing else. Your third note is E, thumb and one. Your fourth note is F, just your thumb. And your fifth note is G, no thumb, no fingers, right? So those are our first five notes. I will play them in order, tune yourself to me, make sure you're sounding about the same. <laughs> new note we're going to add on today is the note above that, which is A. A, if you look at the fingering chart, has an extra little black dot up here that is not over on G, right? That extra little black dot there is this little silver key at the very top of your clarinet. It's right above where your first finger normally sits. So it is just pressing down that key with no other buttons, and it sounds like this. For that, match pitch. There's your new note for the day. Now with that, we're going to go over to our metronome. 80 beats per minute, 8 beats each note, 8 beats rest in between each note. Add in A as your 6th note, starting on C. 1, 2, ready. silver button. All right? There are your first six notes done in long tones. Now we only did it up here, but I want you to do it up and down a couple times every time you begin practicing. It should be about three to five minutes of your practice, just that at the beginning. As we add on more and more notes, it will help you expand your range and your tone. So, if you have not submitted your video from last week, which was to play your five note scale, you now have to submit a video of a six note scale. And if you don't submit it by the end of this week, you'll have to submit a seven note scale after that. So make sure that you submit that scale video. Now I'll show you what the rest of your homework is. We're gonna go back over to your book, scroll down to the next page, which is page eight. Flip over to page eight, you should see these songs. We're going to focus on number 17, 18, 19, and 20, right? So rain, rain. I'm going to take my reed off my clarinet because we're going to be talking for a little bit. 
I'm going to put it in my water so it can continue soaking and not dry out and set my clarinet down safely on its side. So on this, we know from learning how to write and read music that the staff in music spells a certain phrase. E, G, B, D, F. Those are the names of the lines, right? So Miss Megan always says, every good burger deserves fries. Or I say, every good boy deserves fudge. Whichever way helps you memorize it, that tells you what the names of the notes on the lines are. So using that, you can trace your way over to your first note and know that your first note is a G, right? Trace your way over from the bottom line. You know the second note is an E. This next note looks pretty familiar. It is also a G and then a G, and then an E, right? You should be writing in your book as well. This is your book, so make sure that you can do this while you are with me here in the video. G, G, E, and then we've got a new note, but it just goes one up from E. And if you do your alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F is your next letter, so it is an F, and then one letter up from an F is a G. G, E, G, E, G, rest, E, rest, G, G, E, that F again, rest, G, E. There are your notes. Now, as you get further and further into playing, you will not need to write down the names of the notes. But if you would like to now, it is okay to do that. Eventually I will ask you to stop writing in your books, but this is how you're gonna learn to read is by having a reference of notes above it. Now, looking at the rhythms, we know how to count rhythms pretty well. These are ta's and ta's, right? So we are going to ta and ta this exercise before we add the actual pitch. One, two, ready, go. ta a ta a Ta 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 a uh, ta 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 a uh, ta a uh, ta a uh, ta rest ta rest ta 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 rest ta ta a uh. right so there is your rhythm. Now that we have the rhythm down and we've written out the notes, reassemble your clarinet. If you're using water, make sure to just wipe off any extra moisture on your reed. You don't need it to be soaking wet. Set it like I talked about last week with just a tiny little sliver of the black plastic if visible in the background. And then tighten that baby up. We know the first note is G. We know that is open. Second note is E, that is thumb and one. And we know there's an F in there somewhere, which is just your thumb. Right? So here we go, number 17. Listen to me do it once, pause me, rewind me, and do it with me. One, two, ready. Number 17. Now, notice these little markings above the music too. I can get to a red pen. This is a breath mark. It's telling you where to breathe. The only places that are acceptable to breathe in music at this level are breath marks or rests. So if you see a rest, you are allowed to breathe. You don't have to breathe where there is a rest, but you do have to breathe where there is a breath mark. 
that is a musical choice the composer has told you breathe here right so as homework i would like you to analyze the next three in a minor mood hot cross buns and go tell aunt Rody, all in the same style that we just did number 17 with writing the notes above circling the breath marks uh, and get generally getting yourself prepared to play them notice some of the pieces even tell you what certain notes are so you don't have to write that if they tell you it's a d but you do have to write the notes around it i will play the next three pieces just so you have a reference of what they sound like to play along with uh, but i will tell you on google classroom during the on the assignment written up which one of them i want you to send me in a recording with a metronome at about 80 i think i'm going to write it in the google classroom but i will pick one of these four to test you on it will probably not be rain rain because we just did that together but it will be another one of them so i will play the three other ones now in a minor mood one two ready <laughs> Go tell Aunt Rody. One, two, ready. So those are the four pieces I would like you to rehearse. Keep practicing your long tone scales. Begin every warm up with those right now. Add that sixth note A. Make sure that you have submitted last week's assignment, which was the five note scale. If you haven't submitted that yet, you have to send me the six note scale with the A included. Uh, and also, whichever one of these I assign will need to be a video recording sent to me on Google Drive, end of the day Monday at the latest. If you're having troubles with Google Drive, email me, let me know. I'll be on Hangouts, um, and I will talk to you during our next Zoom.